this video, I wanted to talk about the different Kubernetes deployment strategies that are available and how you can utilize those with Businessworks. So you could get zero deployment upgrades of your Businessworks microservices. What I've got on screen is I've got Businessworks Container Edition, the um, development environment, and I've got a really simple greeting service. All it does, it's a, a REST service, an API that returns a greeting. It says hello with the name that, pass, that you pass in, with the host name, and also it gets the application version as well, because I want to show the different uh, versions that are being deployed at any time. The uh, get module property here pulls out the version number that I've got here. I've already created two versions, a 1.0 and a 1.1, and I've already created the ear files uh, related to those so that I can go ahead and create my Docker containers. If I just look at um, my manifest that I've got, all sorts of different manifests, um, here's the original uh, Docker file, but actually I've created two versions. One that will take version 1.0 of my container application, and then also one that it uses 1.1 version of that. You can see on both of them I'm exposing two ports. One is 8081, which is for the actual API itself, and one is 7777, which is for the liveness probe. Um, actually, I'm using it as the readiness probe, and that, that's quite important a bit later on. So I've already built um, the two different uh, Docker containers using the Docker build commands. Um, so they're already done. On this machine, um, I'm running Ubuntu, and I've got Minikube up and running. And uh, so I've got the Kubernetes dashboard all enabled. Uh, there's nothing there right now, it's completely empty. All of the files um, and everything is all stored inside GitHub at the moment at this particular uh, GitHub address. So take a note of that because you, you'll need some of those unless you want to recreate all of the files. And um, it's relatively uh, simple and straightforward to go through. Now, there's different uh, deployment strategies that you use with um, Kubernetes and other things. Essentially, the very first one is, we'll, the first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a brand new service from scratch and we'll get that deployed. Then what we'll need to do is we'll talk about how do you do different types of upgrade strategies. Um, we'll start off with recreate. Uh, recreate really means all of the existing pods that you have running will be killed and new ones are created. So the whole application is, is redeployed, but it does actually have some uh, uh, downtime, which isn't really what we want. But we want to go through that just so that we can see how things react. The next one is a rolling update, or, or ramped it's often called. This is kind of the default inside Kubernetes. And uh, essentially what happens is, is when we release a new version of our application or our, our microservice, it will start up a new, a new pod in Kubernetes. Uh, it will start moving traffic to that new one, and then it will delete one of the older ones. And it will go through that until it's completely upgraded everything. And that's, that's quite a nice way of doing things. You, you end up with zero downtime. Okay, so it's, it's quite nice. You could have issues with it though, if you, ha if you have lots of different microservices that interact with each other, and if there's incompatibilities between their APIs, you, you could end up with, with different issues. Um, so often what's used next is blue-green deployments. Uh, sometimes they're called uh, black-red deployments, is, is however you want to do it, where actually what you do is you leave the existing system alone, but you'll deploy a new version, often called the green version, alongside the existing one. And what will happen is you'll start to switch traffic to that, that new version. The issue is that, that you have there, of course, is you need double the resources to enable that to work. The next one we'll talk about is Canary releases. Um, so we release a subset of our application. Um, we'll, release it, we'll release our application to a subset of uh, users. And what will happen is just some of that traffic will be mo will be moved across kind of randomly. You don't really have a, a lot of uh, control over it. There is also something called AB um, rollouts or AB testing. It's very similar to Canary, uh, except you have much more control over 
how you route in traffic. So it could be header values in the API, um, anything like that that you could use to, to route the traffic to um, your, your, your B testing site. I'm not going to go through that particular one in this tutorial. Okay, because you, you need to start using ingress um, services and, and intelligent load balancers and so on. But I'm just going to work directly with what's available in, um, in Kubernetes and, and specifically Minikube here. So the very first thing that we're going to do, um, I've got Minikube already up and running. I've got my app built. Um, I've got my Docker containers ready. So um, I should be in a state where I can go and build the first service. So the very first manifest file that we're going to look at um, is, um, is this one here. So this is our, our greeting 1.0. Um, so this is going to tell us to create, actually we're creating the whole service here as well, we're exposing it all on a particular port. And um, we can see this is the internal port that we're using um, for the API itself. And then the, this is the description of the API, so we're calling it our greeting app. You can see here we're using our greeting app version 1.0, which is the Docker container that we created. A couple of other settings. Uh, one of the things that we've done here is we've set up the readiness port. Um, when a container is starting up or a pod is starting up, you don't want to be sending traffic to it. It might be live, it might be running, but if it can't deal with the traffic because the application, the service within the uh, pod isn't ready yet, you don't want to be sending traffic to it because you'll just get you know 404 errors and so on. So we're using the uh, readiness probe that we've set up here. It's on that port uh, 7777. I've set up an initial delay of 60 seconds and then it will retry um, every 15 seconds. I think it gives it um, three goes before it will, will, will fail there. And we might see some of the pods go red in, in, the, in the dashboard as, as, as that happens. So it's quite important, you, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll need to um, play around with those figures that's right, right for your particular deployment. So if I get this uh, up and running, it won't take too long. Uh, this one here. So the very first uh, one I'm going to use is I'm just going to, I've already set my um, environment up. So I should be in a place where I can just go cube control apply minus F to say file and then greeting 1.0.yaml. Okay, so that's all, that you, all you need to do. That gets that one started. If I go over to the Kubernetes dashboard, we'll see here already we've got two pods. If we look at, if we just go back to our, um, our YAML file here, you can see here we've got two replicas being set up. So what that means is it will automatically deploy two versions or, or two instances of our pods. Um, and it will automatically balance between the, the two. That's the way that it's going to work for us. So if I look at this, we can see here are the two different pods. These end up being the host names. Um, so look, look at those, they're important. We can see we're using version one of our app and we can actually go and see the logs as they are starting up. So these are the, the logs that, that, that you'll see. Um, if we look at the services, we can see here, this is the port, which is what we defined over here for the node. Everything's good. Let's just go back to workloads. We'll see this one of these might go red in a second, I reckon. As we're waiting for that to, to happen. Now I've also got, if I just go back to terminal here, um, because I'm using Minikube, I can go uh, Minikube service list and that shows me all the services that are available and we can see here our URL uh, for our APIs on 30092, exactly as we expected. So uh, we can quickly test this out. Now I've just set up a really simple, um, a, a really simple shell script here, which I'm just gonna paste into a different terminal window. And there we go. So I've just put, all I'm doing is while true, I'm doing a curl, I'm passing in Dave, which is me, and uh, sleep for a second, and then, then doing it again. And what we can see here, uh, if you remember back in our business works application, our container edition application here, if we just go in, we're saying hello, whatever the name is, and we're saying what's the host name and the version um, from the module properties there. 
we're just checking that out we can see if I just bring up this as well we can see here here's the host name so one ending in PD one ending in M5 and you can see here we are um, doing calls to both different um, applications so we know that that's working uh, very nicely mm -hmm.